G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. In this video I'm going to talk about some addition and subtraction number facts and the topic and the strategy is doubling and halving. So this would be for students as it says on the screen roughly in grade 2, year 2 in the UK, year 3 in um, Australia. So we're dealing with number facts where the two numbers being added together are the same. Some of these are nice and easy, some you can picture in your mind's eye, you can subitize counters if you see them. I'm thinking of examples like double one, double two, double three. Those are the really, really easy ones. And students, um, as I've said in other videos in the past, they're familiar with examples from everyday life, like the legs on a chair, there's two on each side, or the legs on a horse, again, two on each side or two at the front, two at the back. So adding pairs of two, you know, we're not going to find that difficult. And adding pairs of three, that's not too hard either. So a lot of these are not going to be difficult. Students shouldn't find any trouble at all. Let's take a, a harder one though. We're going, we are again using the 10 frames as a good way to help the students to visualize the numbers. So I'm going to use a couple of um, approaches to this um, in this video. So using the 10 frame as one approach, we have seven on each side and we want to be able to say what the result is. Now the two strategies are these. One I've already mentioned and that is to think of an everyday example. So again the smaller ones are easy. Um, we've got things like egg cartons, uh, double six is a nice straightforward one if you know that a dozen eggs is, comes together in an egg carton. Um, some of the larger ones are harder. I don't have a great example for double eight. Um, so you can make something up that works. I talked about in one of my blog posts the, the edges on two um, octagons. So it works but it's not particularly straightforward. For sevens interestingly enough there is another example and that is the word we use in many English speaking countries for two weeks. A week of course has seven days. Two weeks has two lots of seven days or seven plus seven or double seven and we call it a fortnight which just happens to be a little bit similar to the word 14 and the word night. So a fortnight is 14 nights so there's a nice um, if you like a cultural slash historical connection that will work as well. Let's go back to the 10 frames though. If we were doing this with the 10 frames and we put each of the numbers on on one of the 10 frames, put them next to each other and then say what can we see? We would want the students to think about the numbers. We're not going to dive in and say right start moving the counters, what's the answer, hurry up we've got work to do. But rather say I want you to look at this arrangement and see if you can tell what the total is without counting them, as I said last week, and without, without moving the counters even, can you picture what it will be like if you were to move them? That's a more challenging question. If you just say move the counters now, count them up, that's easy and a student who doesn't understand the mathematics at all can, can follow that procedure and get the answer but not, they're not really thinking about it. So this is a much better thinking question here's seven, here's seven, what will this be if we add them all together to make one number? What will it look like? Can you imagine it in your mind? Hopefully the students, the better students especially, will see there are three empty spaces up here and of course if they didn't you'd point it out. So you would ask leading questions like how many spaces are here? What would happen if we moved? So but better students I'm hoping will be able to pick this up themselves and go well I can imagine there are three here, if I take the top three from the right hand 10 frame that will fill up that space, how much will be left and be able to picture it and of course see that the answer will be one ten and four ones and they'll know that's 14. So obviously we will move the counters, this is quite similar to last week's um, video and we can validate that answer and you know confirm that we were right. But again basically I would do a series of these questions using 10 frames, using stories about familiar objects where we have pairs of numbers being added together that are the same. The halving questions of course are the reverse of these or the inverse if you like of these questions. So for this particular example that would be a question like 14 take away 7 equals. Now if you just give students a whole 
you know, a whole page full of questions that are halving questions, after a while they'll recognise none of them are difficult because it's always the same number as this one. So if that's 7, that's 7, you know, 6 take away 3 is 3, 10 take away 5 is 5. So basically you want to jumble them up a bit and not make them too predictable. So that's it for this week. I hope your students enjoy the worksheets and I'll talk to you next week.